Now, in the first session of our training package, we're going to talk about what is CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamic. For the second part, we're going to talk about the examples and applications of CFD industry or academia. And for the next part, we're going to talk about and explain some theories and formulas that are used behind mechanical engineering problems related to fluid flow or heat transfer. Uh, for the next part, we're going to talk about the most renowned algorithm for solving fluid flow problems numerically, which would be the simple algorithm. And for the final part of this session, we're going to build our first project from scratch, meaning that we're going to build the geometry. After that, we're going to mesh that geometry. And after that, we're going to set up the Fluent Software settings for this project. Now, to talk about Computational Fluid Dynamics, or CFD, uh, as most of you guys probably would know, Computational Fluid Dynamics is the science of predicting the fluid flow via mass transfer, chemical reactions, and related phenomena by numerically solving the set of governing mathematical equations. As we all know, there are three approaches to solve problems related to engineering or fundamental sciences like physics, chemistry, etc. The first solution would be the theoretical solution. Now, in this solution, you need to oversimplify lots of equations in order to solve your problem, or you have to have a strong mathematical background. The second solution is the experimental solution. Now, this solution is very time consuming, very expensive. And, and probably the most important point about this solution is that it is not applicable to all problems. So what do we have left? The numerical solution. Now the condition for this solution is a little different from the two former solutions. Now in this type of solution, if you have good CFD knowledge, you would be able to simulate almost all of the problems related to engineering or fundamental science without having the shortcomings of two former solutions. Assume that you're a car maker and you've designed a new car. Now you want to test your car in order to calculate parameters like drag force applied on it or the down force applied to the car by its front and rear spoilers. Now one solution would be to build this car, put it in a wind tunnel and calculate those parameters, which would be extremely expensive. Now what would be the solution then? The solution is to simulate the airflow around this car by CFD analysis and CFD software. Now the same explanation is applicable here as well. In order to analyze aerodynamics of this airplane experimentally, you should have a wind tunnel that this airplane can fit in. However, some of you guys may think that we can use a smaller model of this airplane or this car and put it in the wind tunnel. In that regard, it should be pointed out that in front of the experimental work, there are numerous challenges. For example, the challenges of how and where to put the props on the surface of our airplane or car. Or the next challenge would be whether the operator is skilled enough in order to read the data correctly. Now, turbo machinery simulations are very interesting. By comparing two solutions of numerical and experimental solutions, Numerical solutions have a great advantage in this part. For example, an experimentalist wouldn't be able to calculate the pressure changes on one of the blades of these turbo machines. But you, as a CFD engineer, you would be able to calculate all different parameters inside the rotating zone. And another interesting simulation that we can do using Fluent Software is a simulation of horizontal axis of wind turbine that we will simulate and explain the settings for it in forthcoming session. And as we progress in our training sessions, in one session we will explain how to set up the settings for fluent softwares in order to simulate a shell and tube heat exchanger. And of course another application, another simulation that you could do is the simulation of multi-phase flows. Now in this slide you can see the fundamental equations that are used for fluid flow and heat transfer problems. The first term on the left side of the equation is called the unsteady term and calculates the changes in parameters that are placed inside the parentheses based on time. Now if we put aside this term, the term that is left on the left side of the equation is called the convection term that is related to the fluid flow velocity. The first term on the right side of the equation is related to the pressure of the fluid field. And after that, 
you face the term which is called the diffusion term, which is related to the viscosity of the fluid. And for the final term, you can see that this term is designated by S and represents the source term. Now, this source term can be replaced by different forces based on your project. And for the energy equation, we're going to explain this equation in the next session where we simulate the heat transfer inside a heat exchanger. As you all probably know, the fluid software is a software that uses a finite volume method to solve problems related to fluid flow and heat transfer. Now, the most renowned algorithm for solving these problems numerically is called the simple algorithm. On the right side of this slide, you can see the flowchart related to this, to this algorithm. In the first step of this algorithm, we get a guess and initializing values for pressure and velocity field. In the next step, the software will uh, calculate a secondary value for the velocity field using the momentum equation. And by using those secondary values of the velocity field, the software will calculate a secondary value for the pressure. After that, the software will correct the values of pressure and velocity field using the secondary values for each of them respectively. Finally, this loop is repeated until the results are converged. Now, for those of you who are interested to know more about the finite volume method or the equation discretization methods or even know about different algorithms that are used to solve the problems numerically, we recommend you to read the book called Numerical Heat Transfer and Fluid Flow by Parankar. You can also use the link shown in this slide to download the PDF. As our first project, we will investigate the quasi flow. And we will solve this problem using theoretical solution and neighbor Stokes equation. Now, if you have followed our theoretical solution, and as you probably knew, the most important result that we can elicit from this solution is that the maximum value for our velocity happens in the middle section of the channel, and its value is equal to. 1.5 times the average velocity. Now using numerical solution and using fluent software, we are going to extract the same result that is shown here. Now in order to build our project, we will find and select the fluid flow block and then drag it in the blank space in the workbench software. The first stage is to design the geometry. To do that, we right click on the geometry part and then select new design modeler geometry. In the design modeler software, the first step is to change the units. Therefore, we click on units button and select millimeters. And in this plot of diagram, you can see that the velocity nears and reaches a constant value at the final section of our geometry. Now, in order to extract the shape of the velocity profile, you just have to change the plot direction and we set the value of y to 1 since we want to calculate the velocity changes in y direction. After changing the plot direction, we set the y axis function to velocity and under the surfaces section, we select line number 7, which is placed at the end of our geometry section. And now in this plotted diagram, you can easily see the shape of velocity profile. Now as you can see in this plotted diagram, uh, the velocity values are separated from each other. In order to make it a complete line, all you have to do is to click on curves and then change the pattern of the diagram. Now in order to extract the data related to these diagrams, all you have to do is to enable the write to file option. After that, by clicking on Write, you will be able to save a file where you can see and use the data inside that file by using Notepad or Excel software.
Now, in order to calculate the exact value of velocity at the outlet boundary for comparing it to the theoretical value, we expand the report section and we double click on surface integrals. Now, in the appeared window under the report type, we select facet maximum in order to calculate the maximum value of velocity at the outlet boundary. After that, if under the field variable section, we select the velocity variable, and under the surfaces section, we select the outlet boundary. After that, by clicking on Compute button, the software will give us the maximum value of the velocity. Now, if you compare these two values, which are resulted from numerical solution and theoretical solution, you can see that almost 10% error exists between these two values. Now, the main reason behind this error is due to the short length of our geometry meaning that our fluid flow didn't reach the fully developed state. To benefit from Mr. CFD services including simulation, consultation and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com.